Being able to authenticate your group of attacked or Prism access remote workers against Office 365 is very convenient as it provides a seamless, seamless and on experience to the user. And of course, it's great from a security point of view because you can use the integrated dual factor authentication that comes with Office 365, so you don't have to pay extra for it. But of course, in order to authenticate against Office 365, you cannot use classical protocols like LLDAP or Radios. Instead, you need SAML. Luckily, both Microsoft and Palo Alto Networks have made the integration very simple. And in this video, I will show you the configuration end-to-end -end with all the tips and tricks you need to know to make it work. If this is your first time here, I'm Lars von Consigas. We call ourselves the Palo Alto Networks experts because the next generation firewall is our passion. It's what we do all day every day, migrating firewalls, providing managed services and most important, implementing security best practices. When I started to work with this box in 2010, barely anyone knew about Palo Alto Networks. But as an engineer, I felt that this solution will change the world of cybersecurity. And yes, today we know it did big time, because it's one of the few security solutions that can truly secure your network. However, there's a caveat. You need to set it up in the right way in order to be effective. Because while it's awesome, it's not a magic box. So over the years, we became a professional service partner for Palo Alto Networks, as well as one of a few elite authorized training centers. And with working in the field for so many years and being a trainer, I would like to share my experience with you. So over the next couple of weeks and months, we release new videos and core concepts explaining the fundamental workings of the next generation firewall. So follow us on LinkedIn, YouTube or Twitter to stay up to date. But now let's get started with the authentication of Group of Attack and Prism Access Remote Users against Office 365 Azure ID. So here in my lab, I already have Group of Attack configured, right? So here we can see there is a portal uh, and currently this portal just authenticates against Active Directory via LDAP, right? So and now what we, what we would like to do now is by changing this LDAP authentication against SAML authentication against Azure ID. Right. So and the first thing that we need to do is we need to set up Azure ID. Right. So what we do is we go to portal.azure.com. You basically log in. You, you didn't do need a full kind of uh, admin access to the uh, Azure ID portal. OK. Then here you basically go on to the Azure ID, right? Azure Active Directory. So and here now we want to go to enterprise applications and add a new enterprise application. The the beauty here is that Palo Alto Networks already published predefined applications. And what these applications effectively do is um, are kind of, let's say, the gateway between Office 365 Azure AD and the firewall. Okay, so this is the basic element that makes it very simple for it, right? You can see you can use them for admin UI. So that's basically in order to use your Azure credentials to authenticate against the web UI of the firewall itself, right? Um, Aperture, I guess that's a bit old, captive portal, and global protect. So global protect, this is what we want to use. And we use this both for, let's say, the global protect configuration on the firewall, as well as if you have Prisma access, then the, the same would apply as well. You want to use Prisma access, okay? Um, so this global protect one, right? So we click on this one. Uh, we give it a name, okay? So we basically just call this, I just call this now global protect lab. And we add this. So, and now the very first thing that we want to do is here under single sign on, we want to configure SAML. So we click on SAML, and there's really only just a couple of steps that we need to do, right? So here we go to kind of basic SAML configuration. And what we need to put in here are the identifiers. Now, the identifiers, what is this? This is effectively your Global Protect portal and gateway address that you use. Okay. So the easiest thing is you just kind of take, simply take, take this line, kind of the sample, you paste it in here, and then you just replace this with whatever the, the domain is for your uh, portal. Okay. So in my case, the portal is actually https and then 203.0.1.3.20 so again in my case this is actually a um 
uh, kind of a, just an IP address, right? Because it's in my lab. Of course, in a normal production environment, you would have your domain to so something like access.mycompany.com or whatever domain you have, right? And this kind of domain you need to put in here, right? So again, in my case, what I do is <clears throat> I'm just going to replace this with the IP address, okay? So that's basically 203.0.113.20. Now, here are two caveats. This, this pattern here, that's kind of a sample, and it's misleading in two ways. Number one, it tells you here star dot, okay? So it kind of suggests that you can use wildcards. Unfortunately, you cannot, right? Azure ID does not support any wildcards. This means that you have to basically here enter every single portal and gateway address that you have in your environment, okay? So second caveat is that behind here, it is missing a colon 443. Right. Um, if you do not have this, you will get an error saying that there is kind of uh, uh, the identifier is not matching. Right. Good. So this we need to do here for for the identifier. That's kind of also then reply URL, which is more or less the same thing. Right. Also here, so what we actually do is I just copy this one, put this in there. Right. I just copy here this kind of little string, make it the same, like this. Okay. So. Again, this is now the identifier of my portal. You can see, very simple. Last one that we need to enter is the sign on URL. Um, this one, by the way, it's not so critical. It's just used for testing, right? So if you put in something here that is wrong, it doesn't really matter, okay? So whatever you put in here, it's just usually the portal address. You, you see, you can only put in one, while here you can put in multiple. So in here, you would usually put in just the, the portal address. But again, this is not really critical, okay? Good, right, so now here, um, uh, we can kind of click save, and this will then save this configuration. One word here now for Prisma Access. If you're using Prisma Access, of course, you're having a lot of different kind of uh, gateways, right? So, and for Prisma Access, if you're on Panorama, what you want to do is you go to Panorama, you go to your Cloud Services plugin, under status, and then Network Details, Mobile Users, here, what you see is basically your portal address. That's your portal address, as well as all of the gateways. Now here, again, that's just a demo lab. It only has two gateways. In a production environment for Prisma Access, you can have loads of gateways, right? All of your worldwide gateways. And the important thing here is you do need to put each one in of them into uh, the, the configuration there, okay? Now, of course, could be pasting here, this can be a little bit tiring, right? So that there are kind of two ways how you can do this, especially let's say from an updating point of view, right? So you can of course just take this and manually put it in here. You can see whenever you put in one, there's kind of another one created, right? Um, or what you can do as well is you can actually use this PowerShell script, okay? So what I did now is I just kind of copied the portal address and these two gateways, right? And what I would now have to do is just kind of do a search and replace in here. For Prisma Access, I highly recommend you use the script for the very simple reason that you probably quite often will update, right? Where you set up a new location, uh, change location, right? I mean, it's not something you do every day, but from time to time you can do this. And if you have a script like this, which covers all of the the, the, the URLs, then it this is only updated here, paste it in, and it's kind of done, right? So, but again, you can do it in both ways. You can do it on the GUI or you can do it via this thing. But what I do is I want to show this to you here, okay? So let me just uh, paste this in here very quick. Okay, like this. And now do just the last one. like this, okay? So, and now of course, all of the kind of the remaining ones, we just delete like this, okay? So now, and pasting this in is pretty simple. What you, what you just do is you just copy this from your editor and then you go back to Azure AD and you log on here to Cloud Shell. <clears throat> the important thing is that when it loads Cloud Shell, there are two different Cloud Shells. There's Bash and PowerShell. Just make sure you have PowerShell selected. So if it says bash, just change to PowerShell, okay? So then you just wait. 
then authenticates directly with your user, and then you just paste in this little script. Of course, validate that it doesn't show you any um, error. So now you can see, kind of, I had an error. Object ID didn't match, right? So what what did it do wrong? Okay, in the script, and that's important, right? Here you have your search string for your application. Okay, so here you can see your GP SAML app. What you need to do is you need to go into properties and whatever name you have chosen for your for your app, this is actually what you need to put in here. Okay, like this. Good. So let me just then copy paste this one again and repeat. Okay, boom. And it's done. Okay, very simple. All right. So now if we go back into here, single sign on, and we can actually see here the identifier kind of still my IP address, but now when I click here and add it, you can see it did update it, right? So, you know, it's just the GUI who needs a bit of time to kind of update the, the settings, right? Um, one word of precaution here now is that this script, it kind of, it says add. It's not an add, it's really a replace, right? You can see in here, all of the identifiers that the my IP address identifier that I put in previously is actually was actually removed. Okay, that's why if you want to use this PowerShell script, right, have the script always ready and then always customize the script and just paste in the script if you're updating it, right? Again, when you have a kind of, especially with personal access where you have loads of uh, gateways, then this script is very handy. Good, okay. Uh, now, in my case, what I do is let me actually delete them out again and put my IP address back in so that it works for my scenario for my lab. Okay, and let's save this. Good. Now, from a configuration on Azure ID, we're actually already done. All right, this is it. You can see this is really, really simple, right? The only other thing that you do need to consider, right, is actually here under users and groups that you define who has actually access to the application. If you have um, a kind of, let's say, the most basic Office 365 subscription, you have access to Azure ID. You can do all everything that, that I showed you, right? A limitation that you have is you cannot use groups, so you have to add individual users here. If you do have an additional licenses for Azure ID, right, then you can also add in here groups, right? So in my case, I just have a test account. So all I do is I'm just adding my user. So with this, I'm basically saying this user can use this app, and effectively only this user can now authenticate against Azure ID using this, this application, okay? Good, now, from a configuration point of view, if we now log into our firewall, configure the, the SAML account, okay? Now, let's have a quick look at this. So when we click to here to device, and then you have SAML identity provider, right? You're basically adding the server profile for SAML, right? And then here you can see that it's kind of identity provider ID, and it all looks a little bit complicated with loads of stuff what we might not sure what exactly to put in, okay? Luckily, we don't need all of this, right? The only thing what you need to do is you go back to Azure ID, and then here you can see uh, Federation Meta XML, right? This is actually what you are going to download. So that's an XML file, which actually includes all of the configuration details, right? So now I just go back, right? I say import. I choose this file, this XML file, right? And I kind of here put in a profile name. So I just call this now ID. okay? So, and for now, what we need to do is also disable here validate identity provider certificate. This is something that I will show you later on how, how we're gonna re-enable this validation. Okay, but for now we're gonna disable it. Okay, so and this now did two things. First of all, it created this profile and put in all of the details that, that, that we need. So that's cool, right? And the second thing, under your certificates, it also imported this certificate. 
Okay, so that's basically the configuration. So now the only thing what we want to do is configure an authentication profile or actually, in my case, I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to use the existing authentication profile, which is called Azure ID, and I'm going to rename this into, uh, so this is what's called Active Directory. I'm going to rename this into Azure ID. I change the type into SAML, and I choose now here my SAML profile. Okay. Um, Username, you just put in user, right? And kind of this username attribute, what this refers to, basically the username, right? So basically the user authenticates with this user principal name, so it's UPN, so that's basically the, effectively the email address that the user has on Office 365, right? And this is then basically brought back to the firewall as the username, right? So that's basically the, the field that we want to copy and put in here saying that should be the username. Okay, good. Um, anything else we don't need to change, right? Dual factor authentication. Um, this is something you do not need here, right? If you want to do dual factor authentication with Azure ID, you set up authentication on Azure ID. Okay, so this is basically if you want to do your SAML dual factor authentication with another SAML provider, right? In case of Azure ID in Office 365, you, you, you do not need this, right? And here advanced, you just see all users, um, so that's fine. Okay, good. Now, this authentication profile, of course, uh, kind of automatically applies to my portals and my gateways. Let's just kind of validate this, right? So if I go in here into authentication, I can see this is now Azure ID. Right, because I just renamed it, this automatically populates everywhere, and then we have it here on our authentication as well. Uh, we basically here define a Azure ID. Right, again for the portal and the gateway, this is very simple. Right, just the authentication method. It doesn't really care what it is. You just apply the authentication profile, and this is then what the firewall is using. Now, if you use Prisma Access. It's pretty much the same thing. The only big difference is that, of course, what you're going to do is do exactly the same steps here in your in your mobile users template, right? So in your mobile users template, you go into SAML, you import this. So everything that I showed you, the very much same. You just do here in your mobile users template, which will basically then push this configuration out to all of the mobile users gateways of Prisma Access. Okay, good. Okay, and you can see. Very simple, right? This is really it. So what I do is now let me commit this configuration. Good. So this is now config uh, committed. So now let's connect to our portal. So I'm going to connect to my portal to a 3.0.113.20. Just, of course, be sure if you want to connect to the portal, to the Cloud Protect portal, what you do need to make sure of is that here, uh, in your general settings, you have portal login page, set a factory default, right, and not disabled. The best practice that we always recommend here is that you set this to disable, that you basically do not use this portal because, you know, the only function that it has is to distribute the, um, um, the, the installer, right, and with this you're exposing the web interface of the firewall to the internet, which is not really a good thing, right? So Again, best practice is always disable this, but for testing, it's always a good thing to enable it, right? To basically check your your configuration before you then kind of uh, check it with any of the of the clients. Okay, so I have this enabled, and I'm gonna log in here now. And what you see is, oof, it locked me straight in. It didn't even ask me for a username or password. Now, why is this? Well, of course, here in my Chrome, I'm already logged in to Azure ID. This means Chrome, the browser, already has an authentication token for Azure ID, right? So there you can see the power of this, right? So kind of from a user experience point of view, it's very nice. Now, still, to show you this again, let me actually do the same from a different browser, okay? So here, in this, in this case now, I'm using Internet Explorer, right? I'm here in my lab with this Azure account. I'm not logged into my lab. If you would have a user who has let's say Windows 10 and is authenticated with its Azure ID account against Windows 10. Again, Sinus and On would kick in here as well. And you know, if there's a valid token, then it would log in, in right away. In my case now, because I'm not logged in on this, P, on, on this machine, on the lab machine, it will actually ask me for a username and password. Okay, so, and now see what happened. 
I basically logged in to 203.011.320 and it actually redirected me to Azure AD, right? To the, actually to the login prompt of Office 365. And this is really, I think, another very nice feature here that the authentication really happens against Office 365. So, and that's, this is quite, quite, quite powerful because now the user experience it's exactly the same like the user's already used to with all of the other Office 365 applications that he's using, all right? So here now I'm logging in with my username. So in my case, I do have dual factor authentication actually set up, oh, but I have big fingers, one second. Okay, so I have dual factor authentication set up. So now I'm getting a prompt on my phone to confirm this, just with a push notification. Let's say yes. And boom, it locks me in. Okay, so now here you can see I'm now again connected to my global tech portal, but now I'm authenticated against Azure ID with this. Okay, so you can see very straightforward, very powerful. Good, now let's test this with our global tech client. So here now, I have my client already installed. I logged in, okay? You can see it, it straight away, see that I'm, I'm in, internal. I, I do, okay, so and now I'm actually getting the authentication prompt again, right? So now here again, an interesting things happened. What we see is we can see now the window from Global Protect, but what happens really now in the background is that it, it this is effectively a browser that goes back to um, to Office 365, right? So why this is important? We had cases, for instance, with very old Windows 7 machines um, who had some old Internet Explorer on it, right, which didn't support TLS 1.1 or 1.2. And with this, you know, this window just stayed uh, white, right, because the browser, and it's effectively global protect, just pulling in in our Explorer in the background to, to kind of show this page and then kind of it was not working, right? So be careful with very old machines, right? Uh, and that's why I always like to kind of test this with the, the portal in the browser to basically see that actually the client supports this, okay? Um, good, so again, I'm authenticating here now. Again, if this would now be Windows 10, um, then and I would have would have had my Office 365 account already added to the operating system, then the operating system would already have an authentication token, and all of this would be seamless. It wouldn't even ask me for for any authentication. Okay, so now I'm authenticated, and now I'm getting an error message. Okay, so. This is something is is important, right? I wanted to show you this on purpose. What it says now here is, and it's it's a very common issue that you might run into, where it says that the application identifier does is not was not found. Okay, so what what is this? So that's the string. Let me actually just copy this, right? If we go back here into our show ID, can I second? Okay, then we had here our identifiers, right? And this is effectively that one, right? What it basically says is that all of the identifiers that you put in here, it does actually not match against the identifier that that, that we have, okay? So you can actually see, you know, it all wrote again these, these settings with these old ones, right? So what I need to do now is I basically need to put this in here, okay? So you can actually see, you know, the script interfered again, right? You Probably it's not a good good idea to, you know, use the script or uh, use the GUI, right? Kind of you should, probably should you should settle for one. Um, so in my case, let me put this in again. So now, why did it show me this identifier? Right. The reason is simple that I have an internal gateway, right? And this is now actually my internal gateway, 
right? And I'm trying to authenticate against my internal gateway. And this is why it actually showed me now this message, right? Let me actually show you so you can picture this. So here on my firewall, I have basically under global detect an external and internal gateway configured. The client is currently inside of the network where we can see this based on the little house symbol, right? And with this, I try to authenticate against this internal gateway. And of course, this one has a different uh, domain, right? Um, and again, what you put in there, in my case, I put in the IP address. Be sure that you put in whatever you have configured as the DNS name in the certificate, right? So if you have here an authentication SSL profile applied, right? You can see here I'm using GP internal gateway, right? What you have to put in is always the common name of the certificate. In my case, because it's a lab, um, I'm just using kind of IP addresses. That's why my CN is the IP address. In a normal production environment, this would be a domain name, right? Just be, be aware of this, okay? Good. So again, I uh, have this now put in, okay? I'm saving my configuration. So, and now we're gonna try this thing again. So you can see it connects right away without asking you for username and password. Now, if you want to validate this, um, then you can also go here on the firewall into the system lock. And by the way, for, for troubleshooting, any problems with global protect, same for prison access, your system lock is really your best friend, right? So what we can see here is that I authenticated with the client. It, I was redirected to Office 365. Again, Embezzi got uh, authenticated. I can see now it kind of, uh, the, that the user was successfully authenticated. So all good, perfect, good. Now, one last consideration that is really important. If you go into the portal, right, usually what you would do is in your settings, you would define selection criteria, like for instance, a group membership. So very, very busy saying, you know, this user is part of, of that group. Okay, um, what you can actually see is that uh, when you look into the traffic log, then you can see my IP address is actually now coming up with my, my kind of email address. Okay, and that's of course, this is what I'm using as to authenticate. And how this is called is really also the UPN, the user principal name. Okay, now usually when you authenticate against the firewall, right, then it usually shows kind of the SAM account name, kind of the NetBIOS name from Active Directory. So here one very important consideration that we all can also make sure that all of our group mapping works, right, group mapping for the matching and global protect portal and gateway settings, as well as the group mapping in your security policies, what you have to make sure is that you also configure group mapping properly, right? Usually, you, you, you don't have to do any changes, right? Because if you look into your group mapping settings, right? Then what you see is that here under user attributes, it basically also does a lookup on the user principal name, on the UPN and this kind of uh, email address format that this was in, in the username there. This is actually, that's the UPN, okay? Now in my lab case here, my lab has an Active Directory, but this Active Directory in the lab is of course not synchronized to my Azure ID, right? That, this is why group mapping in my case here in the lab actually does not work, okay? However, if you have this properly configured like this, then it will do the proper mapping back and also your group mapping will work. One word of precaution is that when you, let's say, add a new group mapping configuration, it would auto populate this based on the fact that you basically have chosen that your Active Directory server profile is Active Directory, right? If you have a very old mapping, kind of an old LDAP group mapping configuration, then in here, you might only see some account name, simply because this mapping of user principal name, email address, and UPN, uh, is something that was only added in kind of recent releases, right? If your file was a couple of years old, you might have group mapping setting here that does not have this, right? Then you can just put this in here, right? So the some account name uh, for, for, the, for the primary username, email for mail, and user name number one for user principal name. Okay, and then also your, your group mapping works.
Now, one last step that we need in our configuration is that we want to properly authenticate um, Azure ID on the firewall, right? So previously here, we had in our SAML server, server profile, we had this option here, validate identity provider certificate, okay? This is something that is very important from a security point of view that we are doing this. However, if I just kind of click this, say OK, and commit my configuration, then you can see we're getting an error by saying that a valid identity provider certificate is checked, but no certificate profile is provided. Okay, so what does this mean? It means that here in our authentication profile, all right, where we basically say Azure ID, here we need to choose a certificate profile that authenticates the certificate. What is the problem with this? In a certificate profile, we always need to define a CA, a certificate authority, to validate a certificate. However, if we look into kind of add the certificate that was automatically imported from Azure ID, right? Remember when we imported the XML, it automatically imported the certificate. This one, it's not signed by the CA, it's a self-signed certificate, okay? So this, while it is easy and simple, it does create a problem from a security point of view, right? So now I want to show you how to, how to properly configure this. So what you need to do is you need to import a proper certificate into Azure ID. You have two ways how you can do this, right? One is that if you have an enterprise PKI infrastructure with a proper CA that is properly managed, then just go to your CA admin and ask him basically to, to generate a web server certificate for the firewall, right? That you can use and also then import into Azure ID. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. And um, the other way is actually you can also do this locally on the firewall. Okay, so on the firewall, we again also would need a CA and then out of with this CA generate a certificate. I already have a firewall CA here, so I could use this, right? This is kind of the, the CA that I have already used locally on the firewall to generate my certificates for the firewall management, internal gateway, and the external portal for Global Protect, right? However, just so that I can so you see this, I will generate actually a dedicated CA just for, for this purpose, right? Just so you can see how this is done, okay? So I kind of call this now my uh, Azure AD SAML CA, okay? The common name, you can put in whatever you like, okay? So actually, I just put in the same name, okay? So, and very important, you need to mark this as a certificate authority, okay? With this, we basically created as a certificate signing certificate, okay? Now, here, one important thing, you can see the expiration in days, right? Per default, it's just one year. And one year is probably a little bit short, so you might want to um, increase this to so something like um, three years, okay? So in my case, I'm just gonna put in 1,094, so that's gonna be three years, okay? Certificate attributes, of course, you can put in, right? But they are optional. Good, now we're gonna generate the CA certificate. Okay, you can see I generate the CA, I have kind of this, this is a CA, it also has the private key, right? And now I'm generating the certificate that I want to use for my SAML authentication, right? Um, so I'm gonna call this now Azure AD SAML Auth, okay? And here I kind of put in a proper common name, so AZ SAML. Auth.lab.local, right? And now, very important, I'm signing the certificate with my the CA that I can just create. Okay. So here again, expiration and days. The same thing applies here again. You want to put in, you know, two or three years at least, so you don't have to regenerate you regenerate this every year. Okay. And very important as well. Um, <clears throat> You have to import the certificate now into Azure AD. So this means they only support RSA, right? And they only support the digest up to SHA-256. So do not increase this, right? Leave in, leave in the default settings, okay? So stay with the default settings. Good, so now I'm generating this, okay? <clears throat> so now I want to export it as well. And important, when you, when you export a certificate, you need to export it including the private key. Now the format is actually PKCS12. That's the format you want to choose. You're gonna you put in a password. 
Okay, so you export a certificate. And when you export this as PKCS12, it automatically exports both the public and the private key. This is important. We, we do need the private key on Azure AD. Okay, so we export this. Just saves it there, all right? So and now we want to prepare as well and update our configuration on the firewall. So first of all, here under SAML Identity Provider, we want to change the certificate. So with, this was kind of the default one that was imported with the XML. We're going to change this to the one we just created. So uh, Azure ID SAML Auth, SAML Auth certificate. Okay, that's the first thing. And the second is that we now want to, and of course, make sure I ticked this already previously, but make sure here you now enable it with a validate identity provider certificate. Okay, that's important. Um, so, and now the last thing on the firewall is that here under the authentication profile, what I want to do is I go here and I basically now create a certificate profile. So, what does this do? With the certificate profile, I'm choosing the CA that validates the certificate. So basically, the certificate that has signed my auth certificate, this is what I need to choose here, right? So in my case, this will be the Azure SAML CA, okay? And this basically, with this, the firewall can validate that, yes, this CA signed the certificate, and with this, it validates the authentication, okay? So again, certificate profile, I just call this again Azure AD SAML CA. So here, of course, you want to kind of enable them all to be blocked, right? Of course, if you have a proper corporate CA, what you would do is you would actually import the root CA from your corporate CA, okay? And then also uh, configure a certificate profile where you basically here reference your, your corporate PKI infrastructure. If the PKI infrastructure has proper CRL and OCSP setup, then of course, you can also enable CRL and, and OCSP. Good, okay. So. We have the certificate profile now here applied, right? And that's all what we need to do now on our firewall, okay? So I commit now my configuration. So this is committed. So now basically my firewall validates that Azure ID presents this certificate to us. Of course, we haven't done anything on Azure ID yet. So now if we would try to re-authenticate, so let me open up here a new private window. So then you basically get the authentication failed message because authentication is actually not working. Okay, good. That's a good way actually to validate that the change you did was actually working and it's properly kind of validating that. And of course, this message is a message from the firewall showing an authentication error. Okay, good. So now let's actually now import the certificate into Azure ID. All right. So what we want to do is down here under SAML signing uh, certificate, we want to edit this configuration. You can see this is actually the existing certificate that was um, provided automatically. And now here we want to import our certificate that we created ourselves. Now we can see in here, it says it wants kind of in a PFX credentials and PFX format. The format is correct that was exported, right? It's just the, the ending, it's not PFX, it's kind of P12. So what you just do is you just choose all files, right? So here we know we do see the certificate. We put in the password. And again, you do not have to change the format of the certificate. It's already in the correct format. Now we import it, right? So we can see we imported this one, it's still inactive. So now I want to activate this, make it active. So yes. And the kind of the old one, I just kind of delete. And this is now saved, okay? So now, Let's check this again. I'm gonna re-authenticate. And we can see we're now logged in. Okay, so this works. If you want to validate this, we can do this as well. So we just go here into our system logs. And here we can actually also validate it. Okay, so what we see is, so the client was kind of redirected to Office 365, right? And then here, this is the important thing, right? SAML assertion signature is validated against 
IDB certificate, right? And the certificate that we now use is Azure AD SAML Auth. So that's the certificate that we explicitly created. And this is it, right? You can see, so the configuration is pretty simple, right? There are a couple of caveats in there, of course, as usual, right? Um, but it is pretty simple to, to configure. And again, it's a very powerful way to, to use Azure AD with your Global Protect or Prisma Access.